Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Angel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. For latest updates, you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Mania. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. So, let's begin. In today's video, we'll talk about centric relation, centric occlusion and maximum intercuspation. All of these are clinically important terms used in prosthodontics, orthodontics and even operative dentistry. Let's start with the centric relation first. Centric relation is a core topic of dentistry in general and prosthodontics in particular. The term centric relation has become thoroughly confusing because of many conflicting definitions. Its definition has changed several times over the past half century from a retruded posterior and superior condylar position to an anterior superior condylar position. The concept of centric relation emerged due to the search for a reproducible or repeatable mandibular position that would enable the prosthodontic rehabilitation of the jaws. The anatomic site of focus while explaining almost all these terms is the TMJ. Although I have done a detailed video on the anatomy of TMJ, but for the sake of this video, let's recap briefly some anatomic points of TMJ relevant to this topic. TMJ is a synovial joint formed when the mandibular condylar process joins the temporal bone into the glenoid or mandibular fossa. The joint cavity is divided into an upper and lower joint cavities by the interarticular disc. Anterior to the glenoid fossa is the articular eminence of the temporal bone. The articular eminence has an anterior and a posterior slope. According to GPT-9, centric relation is defined as the maxillomandibular relationship independent of tooth contact in which the condyles articulate in the anterior superior position against the posterior slopes of the articular eminences. In this position, the mandible is restricted to a purely rotary movement. This definition definitely sounds confusing. Centric relation, as said here, is independent of tooth contact, meaning that it has nothing to do with how our teeth in both jaws occlude while the condyles are in centric relation. Because if we didn't have any teeth present in the oral cavity, like in edentulous patients, then the muscles of mastication would guide the condyle and pull that joint up into centric relation. The mandible, while in centric relation, can only make pure rotary movements around an imaginary horizontal or hinge axis which runs through both condyles. In this rotary movement, the patient can open his mouth up to 20 mm. An evaluation of the centric relation position is a key to determining if any aspect of this complex system is not working properly. When not in harmony, it can result in painful muscles as well as jaw and bite misalignment. On the other hand, centric occlusion, also known as intercuspal position or convenience occlusion, is the occlusion of opposing teeth when the mandible is in centric relation. This may or may not coincide with the maximal intercuspal position. Now, what is the maximum intercuspal position? Maximum intercuspal position or MIP, also known as maximum intercuspation or habitual occlusion, is the complete intercuspation of the opposing teeth independent of condylar position, sometimes referred to as the best fit of the teeth regardless of the condylar position. What matters in maximum intercuspal position is the most intimate contact between teeth of both jaws which is independent of where the condyles are placed within the glenoid or mandibular fossa. 
In a few people, centric occlusion coincides with the maximum intercuspal position, hence coinciding with the centric relation. But in many other cases, maximum intercuspal position and centric relation vary anatomically, which can result in TMJ problems. Let's recap all that we have studied so far. Centric relation is a clinically determined relationship of the maxilla to the mandible or a bone-to-bone -bone relationship and is independent of tooth contact. It's a physiologic position that's repeatable and recordable. Centric occlusion, on the other hand, is a teeth-to-teeth -teeth relation when condyles are in centric relation. That is, it takes centric relation as reference. It may or may not coincide with maximum intercuspation. And lastly, the maximum intercuspation is independent of the bone and is all related to the teeth. It is the most intimate contact between teeth of both jaws. It is the best fit for upper and lower teeth and again, it's independent of condylar position. I hope this video is clear and you all got your concepts very clear on centric relation, centric occlusion and maximum intercuspation. If you think this video was really very helpful, please make sure to give a thumbs up and share the video ahead. Please do subscribe and turn on the bell icon to get notified on upcoming videos. In case you have got any questions regarding this video or any other video, you may write down your questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.